everyone and welcome back to the channel today we are checking out the atom se by potensic drones it is a highly portable foldable 4k camera shake vanish electronic image stabilization system optical flow sensor plus tof sensors 31 minute flight time battery gps rc quadcopter ready to fly so taking a closer look, we have a drone that has the DJI Mini styling. We have the folding arms with landing legs on both on the front and on the rear to stick that landing. We have the brushless motors with the dual bladed leaflet style props, individual props here. We have the remote tilt adjustable 4K camera on an anti jello mount. So this is not a two axis gimbal but just an anti-jello mount. Now, this can be tilted beyond zero degrees to a positive 20 degrees up and all the way down to 90 degrees and has a wide field of view of 118 degrees. And even though it doesn't have a mechanical gimbal, it does have some smooth videos thanks to what they call Shake Vanish Electronic Image Stabilization System. Now, the built-in DVR which is in the rear right underneath of the battery bay, will record 3840 by 2160 pixel resolution videos and 4680 by 2592 pixel or 12 megapixel photos to the micro SD card. A class 10 or U1 micro SD card is recommended and a four gigabyte micro SD card up to a 200 56 gigabyte micro SD card is supported. On the bottom, we have three huge ventilation cutouts to keep it cool. There's the optical flow sensor camera and the TOF sensors, which measures depth and distance and is most precise between 0.3 to 5 meters, but will work up to 30 meters high. It will help in holding position indoors when GPS is not available, as well as outdoors. It will automatically switch to the optical flow mode when GPS is not available. We have the power push button on and off switch, a short followed by a long press powers on and off the drone. And of course, a battery needs to be inserted. And here is the battery in the rear. Simply press the lock button to remove. Now, the battery is a 7.2 volt, 2,500 milliamp lithium ion battery. It is set to be good for about 31 minutes of flight time. And we get two of these batteries for a maximum flight time of 62 minutes. Now, charge it up via the type C port with the cables provided. A red LED light will turn off once it is fully charged. And Charging the battery will also activate the battery when used for the very first time. It can also be charged using this 5 amp 60 watt parallel charging hub sold separately. It will conveniently charge up to three batteries at the same time and it is available without any extra batteries, with one extra battery and with two extra batteries. Mine came with one extra battery. It will charge up a battery or batteries in about an hour and a half. It also has a 5 volt USB port for charging up the remote controller, your phone or device. And once a battery is inserted or removed, the LED lights will show the charge status of the batteries. Or you can press the battery level check button to see the charge left in the batteries as well. So to insert the fully charged battery onto the drone, simply line it up and slide it in and it will lock into place. Now the Atom SE with the battery weighs in at 244 grams. So there is no need to register this drone. The remote controller has dual flip out working antennas and it feels really good in the hands even without any fold out hand grips. It slides out to accommodate your phone and has a type C port to connect to your phone. 
Now there's three cables to choose depending on your phone's data port to connect to the remote controller. Once connected, there is no need to connect your phone to the drone via Wi-Fi. As a matter of fact, the drone does not even emit a Wi-Fi signal. So the connection between the remote controller and the drone and thus between the remote controller and your phone is called the PixSync 2.0 and it is set to provide up to four kilometers of transmission range for both video and control distance. So make sure the antennas are positioned perpendicular to the drone for maximum signal strength. So we have the removable gimbal stick storage on the bottom of the remote controller for storage purposes. Now the gimbal sticks are made out of plastic and has a rubber ring around the tip for grip if you are a pincher. Now here's a power push button on and off switch with battery level indicator LED lights. We have the return to home slash pause button, long press for one second for return to home and short press to pause the return home process. We have the video button and the remote camera tilt dial on the left shoulder. We have the photo button on the right shoulder. Now long press both the video and the photo button simultaneously for two seconds for emergency stop. Now this will stop the motors and the drone will fall from the sky. So use it only in an emergency. So both sticks to the bottom and in, or both sticks to the bottom and out, will arm the motors of the quadcopter, and throttling down will disarm the motors of the quadcopter. Charge up the 3.7 volt, 2,200 milliamp size built-in battery via the same Type-C port. All right, guys, so here we go with the Potenzic Atom SE. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card inserted, formatted, and a brand new charged battery never used all right and here's my remote controller with my phone and i'm using the lightning cable connector so just like that it is ready to go so let's power up the drone short followed by a long press powers up the quadcopter and long pressing of the remote controller powers on the remote controller and let me go ahead and start my phone app here and it is called the Potenzic Fly or Potenzic Pro phone app. And it is being connected with the remote controller. And it is now connected with the quadcopter. So I can enter the device. And there you go. I got Wi-Fi FPV. Oops, not Wi-Fi FPV, but cable connected Pix Sync. FPV. So let's go ahead and check it out. Yep, looks like there's not much delay at all or latency. That is nice. All right, so let's check it out. It says capable of taking off. Well, let me go ahead and screen record here. Three, two, one, boom. Screen is recording. And it is showing me 12 satellites capable of takeoff, 99% battery life, 29.55 minutes of flight time. So for any GPS drone, what you want to do is calibrate the compass. And here we are in the control settings. And here I have the beginner mode turned off. But if you turn on beginner mode, you're going to be limited to 30 meters in distance and 30 meters in height. So turning that off and I maxed it out to 120 meters in altitude and distance limitation 4,000 meters. And here's the speed setting. I'm gonna set it to video, which is speed number one. Circle flight set to 10 meters. I'm gonna increase it to about 30 somewhat meters. And clockwise rotation. So that is set. Let me double check to make sure that is set. And here's the compass calibration. Here's the mode control. Here's the battery indicator and metric or imperial. You can switch to let's start the calibration. And there you go. Rotate it horizontally. 
just follow the app and it says to rotate it vertically with the nose up so rotating it okay complete it so this thing doesn't have a gyro calibration so we don't need to do that now let's go back to the settings and i just want to double check on all of the settings so there you go all right so let's check this thing out let's go ahead and arm it both sticks to the bottom and in and then throttle down this arms it like really quick and both sticks to the bottom and out does the same thing okay so let's take off Okay, GPS position hold, and it is holding pretty steady, let me yaw in place and see if it yaws in place, and it does, yes, look at that position hold, really nice, oh yeah, yaws in place, that's what I like to see on a GPS clock out there. Okay, now this thing has optical flow sensor as well as a TOF sensor that measures the depth and distance. So if you put your hand underneath, it will actually rise up in altitude. Cool, huh? So let's sneak in. Whoa! <laughs> it got super angry. So it has very good position hold here. All right. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Full pitch and the full yaw oh wow look at that radius pretty big for the camera mode or speed number one mode so this will be good for taking videos so let's see how smooth this thing is turning around wow very nice letting go forward pitch very nice let me get my pitch stick right in the middle here and turn around again. Well, for a quadcopter that doesn't have any mechanical gimbal, this thing is taking some nice videos. Okay, I missed myself because the radius of the turn is kind of wide. So let me go away a little bit more and then kind of slow down in the pitch and then turn around there you go coming towards me wow the electronic image stabilization system this thing has is really nice it has a jerky motion because i let go of the throttle but if it had a 2-axis gimbal on top of this this thing would be really really nice look at that take some nice videos all right so let's go ahead and full pitch and see how fast it goes i think it goes up to six meters per second 5.9 meters per second at and holding steady so let me turn around okay facing myself once again let's go to normal mode speed number two and forward pitch. There it goes at 9.9 .9 meters per second. Okay, letting go, turning around. Got me in the center and coming towards me. Yeah, holding at 9.9 .9 meters per second. Okay, letting go. Turning around. Okay, coming towards me. Full pitch and full yaw. Oh yeah, the radius of the yaw got smaller so you can make tighter turns in the normal mode or speed number two. All right, so there you go, speed number one and two. Let's go to sport mode. And we are in sport mode. Forward pitch. What's the max speed here? 15.1 and holding steady. Okay. Letting go. And then turn around. 
still giving me good videos. Where am I? Okay. I should be right about there. There I am. I see myself right in the middle there. Okay, forward pitch. Okay, gotta keep that pitch stick right in the middle. 15.989. Maximum speed, 15.9 meters per second. Turn around. All right, so let me go ahead and increase the camera tilt all the way up. This is low power. Please exit sport mode at one point, he says. I have 78% battery life. How can it be low power? It must have drained out the battery. Okay, let me do one more. Pitch forward and somehow it exited the uh, sport mode to normal mode by itself. Okay, let me go back to sport mode and let's see. Forward pitch, whoops, wait a minute. The camera tilt went back to zero degrees. I had it up positive 20 degrees, just like right now. I'm a forward pitch. And it is going. I'm draining a lot of battery here. Okay, letting go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around, but look at the uh, camera angle. It went back down to zero degrees. Remember, I had it up here. I didn't do it. It did it itself. Okay, so where am I again? Okay, there I am, right in the middle of the screen. Camera tilt all the way up, forward pitch, in sport mode. Fifteen point nine. Yeah, that's the maximum speed. And when I let go, the camera angle went back down to zero degrees, which is pretty cool. It automatically compensates. So let's go back down and. Go into normal mode. Get out of the sport mode. All right. Okay, let's bring it right above here. Right here and check out the camera tilt. So you've seen all the way up to positive 20 degrees, all the way down to zero or 90 degrees. And here is about where zero degrees were, were right here. Okay. There's a little breeze kicking in, so you can see the quadcopter is kind of leaning to one side. It is fighting the wind to stay in position. I can see that the quadcopter is slightly crooked in the air because the wind is blowing this way a little bit. Aha! Not bad. Too bad there's only one speed servo though. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this thing in. Okay, and establish our home point and check this out guys when I land the quadcopter all the way down it won't go any lower than that as you can see I'm trying to throttle down it won't go any lower than that you got to hold the throttle stick down for a little while and then it'll start landing itself but you can let go of the throttle stick while it's doing that check it out see that it automatically lands itself and the motor shut off that is so cool very very nice behavior so even though it doesn't have a two axis gimbal this thing takes some nice videos so let's go ahead and check this thing out with the uh, fail safe or return home first let, let's push it out and let's do the smart return home button okay there you go, rising up in altitude. Couple of beeps. Okay, let me back up a little bit. It's going pretty high up. Looks like about 30 plus meters. Okay. Okay, comes back. Turns around, takes his time and starts to descend eating some prop wash oh and it kind of slows down right there 
at that altitude. So yeah, about that altitude, maybe about 15 meters, or maybe 20. Okay, and it continues its descent. Let's see if it slows down again. There, right there, it slowed down and it gradually comes down and the motor shut off. <laughs> this thing is really nice. Wow, very nice behavior. Okay, so let's see here. I am screen recording. Let me go ahead and start my video recording. And let me go ahead and stop my screen recording and then restart the screen recording because I am about to test out the fail-safe return home. So I don't know if the screen is going to be recording or not or you know I'm gonna get an interference because the phone is connected to the remote controller via the cable. So if I turn off the remote controller I'm probably not going to have any video feed from the quadcopter because we are connected with the Pix Sync 2.0. All right, so let's go ahead and check this thing out. Arming it. Okay, and forward pitch and letting go. Okay, here you go. Moment of truth. Turning off the remote controller. Okay. Remote controller is turned off. Let's see what happens. It's rising up in altitude, but look at that. I'm disconnected. So there is no video once you get this, uh, once you go too far and get out of reach of the Pix Sync 2 or when you get disconnected and turn off the remote controller like I did. You probably will never get disconnected, possibly, because it'll probably come back. But this is the best way to test it out in a relatively short period of time. That bird was checking out the drone, turning around, and let's see. With the remote controller turned off and everything, Let's see if it still remembers the home point accuracy. Coming down. Slows down right about there, maybe about 15 meters. Okay, slow descent. No more eating up the prop wash because it slowed down. The beginning first half it did eat some prop wash and slows down even more and lands pretty close to where it took off very nice and that is the fail safe return home so this thing has really really nice behavior so i'm gonna go ahead and turn the remote controller back on remote controller is back now let's see if the phone app gets reconnected it'll take a little while but let's see if it gets reconnected uh, I felt a haptic feedback here. So hopefully it gets reconnected. There you go. We are reconnected. And the video is continuing to record. So let's see if the uh, on-screen recording is recording. Yes, on-screen is recording as well. So nice. Okay. So... Let's check this thing out one more time. And this is the crucial one. I'm going to turn the remote controller back on while it is coming back. Guy's doing a scooter out here in the desert. 
Hey, pretty cool. Okay, so turning off the remote controller once again. Screenshot saved, thank you. Okay, it's coming up and I'm disconnected. I'm gonna turn the remote controller back on. Okay, turned it back on, but it is still rising up in altitude. So even though the remote controller is turned on, it is not connected yet. And I felt the haptic feedback and soon I'll get my phone app turned back on and connected via the PicSync 2.0. It's heading its way back and let's see. There you go. The drone is returning. I am reconnected, but it's continuing. And let me go ahead and hit that X. And there you go. It has exited the fail safe return home. I have regained control of the quadcopter and I am flying it. So there you go guys, on its way back from a fail safe, it'll reconnect. And maybe you just gotta press that X to get out of the return home process and you can resume control. Look at that, very nice. All right, so let's double check once again if I'm screen recording. Sorry about that. I got to continue to check it because sometimes it doesn't want to do it or save it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my on-screen recording. Start it back. Three, two, one, boom. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we're going to test out some of the special features. And it looks like I got 47 minutes left or... 46% left and 12 minutes and 50 seconds left in my flight. Okay, not bad. All right, so let's go ahead and check this thing out. Here we have the head mode, unlock mode, and altitude mode, circle flight, waypoints flight, and follow me. Let's check out the headless mode. So let me push it out and look at that. It is going sideways away from me. Pull it and it's coming towards me. So however you configured it and took off that will be the northbound heading and that will be the southbound heading when you pull it back so when i go to the left it is going to the left but actually it's going forward going to the right it is actually going backwards so it doesn't matter which way the quadcopter is facing i'm in a spin push it forward and it'll go away from me and pull it it'll come back towards me even in a spin going to the left in a spin and going to the right in a spin so this thing has very good headless mode control there you go guys so let me get out of the headless mode and i'm back to the head mode and what is this unlock mode nope that doesn't seem to work and there you go i got altitude mode on or attitude mode it says and this means that it is not in gps mode anymore so there you go, attitude mode. So I'm going forward. And I let go. It just glides. So GPS position lock is off in this attitude mode. So you can fly it more sportier and a lot smoother like that. When I let go, it continues to drift a little bit. Going forward. Letting go, continues to drift. Nice. That is attitude mode. Turn it off, and there you go, holding position. So now we have GPS position hold back. So forward pitching and letting go of the sticks, it'll come to an abrupt stop and it holds position. Very nice. Okay, let's do a follow me. So let's go ahead and bring this thing in just a little closer. Now I also tested out the follow me at a different location. And it works really nice.
Okay, so it's got me off a little bit. So let me go with the camera tilt angle down a little bit and there I am. So let's go ahead and walk away from it. It is following me, but my GPS position is slightly off. And there you go, it is readjusting. Oh man, when I did it at that other location, it worked really well. So my phone's GPS position is a slightly off today. So one more time, following me. It should get me directly in the center of the screen, but it's off a little bit, okay? So let me go and walk this way. And it should start following me. There you go. I see movement and it is following me. Going this way. And let me go the opposite way. See, I have to go off screen a little bit. And it is regained it myself and following me. And I'm going away from it. And I have to go upwards towards the screen a little bit. But it is still following me pretty nice. So in this case, you might want to camera tilt up a little bit. So when you walk away, you're kind of in the center of the screen. And it is continuing to follow me. So let's go ahead and turn around. And let me see. Let me go towards it. And I'm going to the bottom of the screen and then finally it starts to back up. So what I want to do is lower down the camera tilt angle and start walking towards it. So when you're going towards it, it will catch you in the middle of the screen sort of, you know. So there you go. Follow me works excellent. Very nice. Even reversing it works really nice. Look at that. Going to the the right of the screen and increasing the camera angle a little bit so you are in the middle oh yeah it works pretty nice there you go nice let me exit and confirm all right so we got six minutes left 26 percent so let's go ahead and check out the circle flight okay 30 somewhat meters away oh it's gonna go backwards there you go and let me camera tilt up a little bit so I'm in the middle and there you go it is starting to circle me at the altitude that I was in but from the settings it's 30 somewhat meters away and look at how smooth it is, even though the horizon is tilted because it doesn't have a two axis gimbal. So this quadcopter would really benefit from a two axis gimbal because it has the anti-shake electronic image stabilization and it does a really good job. And if it had a two axis gimbal, it would be even better. Yeah, that shake vanish electronic image stabilization system very nice let me see if i can throttle up and down oh no throttle up and down is a no-go let me yaw oh it exited the uh circle me once i yawed okay let me bring it back and hopefully we got enough time Circle flight, uh, it says low battery, so I'm unable to do the circle flight or continuation of the circle flight. Okay, let me exit. Okay, make sure I'm screen recording once again. And the video is recording, so now let's go ahead and go to video mode and do some FPV. And once again, look at how smooth it is. Turning around. Letting go of the pitch a little bit and turning around. And we are in the uh, 
camera mode so the yaw speed is very slow. There I am coming towards me. Full pitch. Oh, this thing is nice. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Man, if it had uh, a two axis gimbal, that would have been so much nicer. Okay, I got three minutes and 42 seconds remaining. 15 minute battery life. So let's see if it has a low voltage return home and at what period it kicks in. So if I have three minutes remaining in my flight time of the battery, it really doesn't have a low voltage and a critical low voltage, does it? We'll see and find out and what happens as soon as we hit low voltage. Okay, just turning around, waiting for the low voltage to kick in, guys. There you go. Smart low battery return, rising up in altitude. So this is the low voltage. It doesn't have a phase one or phase two. It just returns to home. At almost three minutes left in the battery life at like 11 12 percent maybe okay and it is telling me it is descending now eating prop wash and then slows down right here about 15 meters look at those birds there must be a thermal right there coming down continuing to beep Will it slow down? Yes. Oh, look at how close to the middle of the landing pad and landed itself. That is awesome. There you go, guys. The flight test of the first battery. So let me go ahead and stop the recording. Stop the screen recording. And then I'll be right back. I'll put another battery in there and we'll test out the circle flight and the waypoints. All right, guys, so I got another battery in here, but it is not completely full. It has 44%, 12 minute point, uh, 40 somewhat seconds remaining. So let's go and do the circle flight once again. And we are still 37 meters, so we are good here. So let's go and check it out. Circle flight. The altitude is five meters or higher. So let me go up in altitude and then circle flight. So it turns around and reverses away from the point of interest. That is pretty cool how it reverses. And it starts to commence right away or after a couple seconds all right so we know that it is doing a very good job of the circle me now we tried the yaw we tried the throttle the throttle has no response the yaw will exit the circle me so let's do the pitch can i come closer yes i can and if i let go it will exit as well yeah so there is no control over the circle me feature just in the settings in the app okay so let's go ahead and do the waypoints here let's see let me zoom in on myself a little bit and plot some points one two three four and five and hit go confirm flight slide and let's see there you go it is moving towards number one which is going to be right about there you can see it in the app it hit number one stop turns and goes to number two and here it is with the fpv video 
stops, turns, and goes to number three. Let me zoom in. There you go, number three. So everything works on this clock up there. There's nothing bad that I can say about it, except there's no manual input control while it is doing the circle me flight. That would be nice if I can throttle up, throttle down, and also pitch forward and pull it back to control the distance manually. So you gotta do that in the settings in the app and uh, you're stuck with that um, distance. And also that it doesn't have a two axis gimbal. It is in, it is back and it has done its waypoints and it is positioned itself on number five. So two things, it doesn't have a mechanical gimbal or two axis gimbal, that would be awesome on this quadcopter, but that will increase the, uh, the weight above 244 grams that I've have measured and also the fact that it can't do any manual inputs in the circle flight those are the two only complaints that I have on this clock up there everything else is working just fantastic okay so let me go ahead and get out how do I get out erase everything and there you go and I have retaken control of it. All right, guys, so that'll do it for this video of the Potensic Atom SE camera drone, I would call it, and pretty sporty as well. So, very nice quadcopter for its size and the price. I believe at the time of this recording, it was $249 with two batteries. So that is not bad. The DJI Mini SE, you can get it for about $299. But I checked online on Amazon and it is not being offered in Amazon anymore. So I don't know about the return process and all that via DJI store only. So maybe they're trying to phase this thing out. The Mini SE. So if you don't like that, then you can get this one from Amazon for $249, comes with two batteries. It doesn't have a mechanical gimbal, but it does have follow me. It has waypoints, headless mode, and attitude mode. Not altitude mode, attitude mode, where it turns GPS off and flies more smoothly. I don't know if uh, the Mini SE has follow me and waypoints and circle flight but this one has all and it works pretty good it just doesn't have manual input controls for the circle me flight so there you go manually landing it and comes to a hover right there and look at that holds position until you hold down the throttle and it lands gently and the motors turn off there you go guys my review and test flight of the Potensic Atom S thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time nice